Welcome back to another episode of Getting Creative With, the show where AADL staff engage with an arbitrarily chosen topic to stay playful, inspired, and, well, creative. My name is Ksenia, and with me today are AADL staff members Aurora, Molly, Jane, Marianne, and Stephanie. And this week's theme was beans. You can grow them, eat them, and make them out of jelly. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Uh, to come up with beans. So Aurora, what did you do with this amazing uh, material slash theme? <laughs> I thought about it, like you said, bean, you could eat it. Um, you could do a lot of different things with it. Um, I saw some um, artwork that done with bean, beans made out of, you know, decorated like a mosaic kind of thing. I thought that was kind of interesting. So I bought a couple boxes that is plain like that. And then um, I draw the designs on top so that I could see what I want to do. And then I glue the beans on top of it. And then um, different type of beans to give it different idea, um, give it contrast. And also I paint the box too. I have so much fun that I make two of these. So um, I make another one. This one is the otters. So it's out of the bean as well. And I thought, you know, but it, it's hard sometimes to find the white beans and all the texture and the colors you want to put on it. So, um, but I, I was able to get some, but there is a mixture. I end up putting some seeds, some sunflower seeds to give it different texture because I only have like six, seven types of beans at home. And, trying to get different colors and stuff but overall i i i was happy with what i did so that is adorable and beautiful and i can't believe you have six or seven kinds of beans at home i know of like four and one of them is jelly and <laughs> oh that's interesting yeah <laughs> there's so did you did you not paint them at all you just use the different um the different varieties of them no, I didn't paint them. I have some uh, mung beans, green beans. I have some um, black eye beans, um, some black beans, and some red beans. Um, it was um, from the project I'd done a while back ago. Um, I was making shakers for a program that I have all these different beans that I was able to, able to accomplish that. And then, if you already said, but how did you get them? What type of adhesive did you use? Um, just tacky glue. Um, oh, okay. I, I, I draw the image on it. After I figured out what kind of colors I want, I put tacky glue, individually glue these guys mm. in. Um, I did spray it, uh, a clear coat to protect it because it, you know, it's dry stuff and you want to make sure it's not get wet. So I did do that. Okay. Yeah. It looks good. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Gorgeous. Um, do you know what you're going to be putting in the boxes by any chance? Or um, beans? Actually, this will be my granddaughter's Christmas present. She doesn't know it, but I'm going to mail it to her um, so she could keep safe something. She always enjoy anything that I make for her. So that's so cute. <laughs> Nice. And did you just, um, where did you get the design ideas from? Was it something that you just had in your, in your mind or? I didn't want it too much detail because the bean, some of them is cute, you know, try to get, you know, so I'm trying to get something like simple line drawing that I thought that the little girl would appreciate it. So that's where I am trying to look for idea for simple draw lines yeah. to give me an idea to draw on the box. Cool. What do you think was the hardest part of this project? Because for me, just looking at it, I'm like, wow, how do you get that level of detail just with, you know, beans and seeds? Well, I did have a challenge try to give it more detail. I actually overlay some beans over on top of another one to give it more detail. Originally, I didn't have an edge piece on it, but then I feel like 
it's not enough detail. So I end up putting um, stuff on the edge to give a more definite um, design so that it could could see it. And um, that's how I also end up getting some sunflower seed rather than the black bean because it's just too much. Uh, the black bean is just too big for the eyes. So um, I also use the sun seed to, to do the eye too, because I didn't, the bean that I have is they're huge and they're not able to let me put more detail in it. So I did do a combination of the two um, just to, until I'm happy with the design that is not, um, not able to see the animal at the same time to give it enough detail to see it, so. How much time did you have to put into that, Aurora? Was it really time intensive? Um, I would say a couple hours for a box because yeah. once once you kind of design it on it, you try to find the right bean that fit in the space and glued it on. I would say, yeah, a couple hours each box. And did you do one section at a time? Like, um, like an ear and then another ear or? Yeah. yeah. How long did it take to like set and like dry the beans, the beans to like stay in place? Um, actually with the tacky glue is pretty quick. Immediate. Yeah, I would say in an hour or two, mm. it, it was pretty um, stayed put. I think that if you use regular glue, it might take a little longer, but the tacky glue did help with that. Mm. And you didn't experience any sort of like um, swelling or warping of the beans with the glue? Because I know there is still some water in adhesives, but did you not experience any kind of like mis misshaped like No, because um, these beans, I had it for ages, I would say a year in a container. So, but I mean, some of the bean itself, it dried up so much that the shell have come off and I, I get to choose, you know, which one to use. So I have a enough, um, collection to choose from to use mm. it nice. and also by spraying it it helps to retain whatever that is in it yeah mm -hmm. nice cool well thank you Perfect. so much aurora that's i'm sure that she'll really love receiving that gift it's very very cute and so beautiful and inspiring the detail is just amazing so thank you thank you <laughs> um Molly, hi, welcome back. Hey. <laughs> Hello. What hey. do you have for us today having to do with beans? <laughs> um, so I I thought I had a lot of beans on hand and then it turns out I did not. <laughs> so but I what I did have on hand was some dried garbanzo beans. Uh -huh. Um so I have an eight month old son and this is like a little bit still too young or too old for him. Um, but I decided to make kind of like a sensory bin. Um, so I took an old Amazon box that I have and an egg carton. Now they're gonna roll all over the place. Um, and so one section, one section is just like beans and like kind of weird random, like a block, different things that are hidden in there. Um, and then I thought with the egg carton, you could like, find the toys and pull them out into this like section and then these little areas or even maybe you want to like stick the block in there that might be fun um and then if you had more than one type of bean you could like sort them or even just scoop and pour um with the with the beans but I had fun kind of picking out what little toys I wanted to hide in there because that's always kind of a fun little like ooh surprise um so yeah, that's what I came up with. When do you think he'll be ready for it, Molly? Uh, well, I feel like the garbanzo beans, like they're still, you know. Pretty I mean, little. They're pretty little and he's definitely putting everything in his mouth right now. So I, I don't think we're quite ready for, <laughs> for yeah. this. Are you going to have like the zero to three, you know, yeah. warning? <laughs> warning sign. I definitely, I mean, like maybe if, I mean, I'm, when we're playing with him, we're like right there with him. But um, so maybe if you were like really supervising, 
-hmm. or if they were cooked beans mm -hmm. maybe um but yeah probably for a lake one and up yeah. i guess yeah um, well how what were the ages of our babies that would come in remember and had all those sensory yeah, things i kind of that's kind of where i was coming from i was thinking about um our sensation stations program which really was like right babies you're a baby come on mm -hmm. come on down um and another like non-bean type sensory thing i've done before is with hominy um which is basically like corn like dried like ground up corn um and that's like a really safe option because it's not it's it's so fine that you can like sift your hands through um with beans i think like if you were going to do something with somebody like a little one that's quite young and like putting things in their mouth you'd want it to be softer or like bigger um so that it's not a choking hazard um but eventually it would be cool to do like scoop and pour because it makes such a nice like sound too not too loud <laughs> <laughs> really really cool did you <laughs> Like, does, does your box, does your sensory box, like, have a theme, like, a construction theme of some sort, or was it just kind of like, oh, whatever I have around, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in there? You know, I had a bunch of, like, old, like, toys from when I was little that, like, mm -hmm. um, it didn't really have a theme. It was more like I had this little, like, Sesame Street guy and one of those old school um, weeble wobbly dudes. Oh. <laughs> um and I just wanted things that were like large enough that would be safe for, mm -hmm. and I also liked the comparison of like, this is a larger item and like the garbanzo beans are like that little. So like, you're going to be able to find, find the toy. Um, you could also play with doing like, maybe like something really soft, like cotton balls with mm -hmm. garb, with beans. Cause then you're like comparing those right. two different textures um but this is kind of more like i guess my theme is more size comparison mm -hmm. um between the beans and the toys mm -hmm. block mm -hmm. yeah and when you're done you can put your things and recycle the <laughs> recycle your egg carton and your box and your beans can go back in their bag and get washed uh -huh. and your toys can get washed and Mm -hmm. nice. you're yeah. all done yeah it's a it's a really cool like uh um compartmentalized sort of unit that is really easy to like clean up and stuff but that's really neat like now that you're speaking about all the different comparisons like it's i don't know it's it's inspiring for me to like think about it from your your child's perspective for instance like oh yeah these textures and these different sizes do matter to somebody who is like really really small and it's something I take for granted, but I'm sure you see him exploring that kind of stuff every single day. So yeah, right now he's like in this like developmental leap where he's really like noticing uh, comparisons between items. So like wheels are very fascinating to him and like anything that's like a circle. I've noticed he's like zooming in on or a button and it's like if it's a really tiny button, he's going to go find it. And if it's a big button. So I think that helped inspire my project. Mm -hmm. Oh me. Um, have you? Do you have any other sensory bins planned out in the future? Bean themed or otherwise? You know, I'm mostly just excited as he gets older to be able to do some to be able to do some more of this type of play. Um, we I've done like more like a water sensory play type thing with him. Um, but like thinking back to some of the stuff that we did with the sensation stations program, um, I'm trying to think we did one, one sensory table was like cotton balls and then these like tiny little finger puppets that were hidden within the cotton ball. So it was almost like a snow theme, you know, mm -hmm. you had like all this white and then these like little shimmery little finger puppets hidden in there. Mm -hmm. um, black beans are nice. Uh, cause they're kind of bigger and you could do like with colanders that you're like scooping and pouring and the black beans would stay, they, they wouldn't get filtered through the colander. But then if you compared that to like a colander in, um, I don't know, say a bin of lentils or a bin of like that hominy, 
um, those might filter through the the holes in the colander. Mm -hmm. So like that's an opportunity for some comparison. Yes. Well, such cool ideas. Like this is something I would never think of. So I'm just astounded at the moment. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. Well, thank you, Molly. That's he's gonna have so much fun with it. <laughs> Hope so. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Jane. Hello. And hi. Um, okay. Happened? So for what I decided to do, um, I'm gonna have to screen share because I. You guys were saying before we did it. Um, before we started that you guys were doing a lot of kind of organic things. And I did something that's almost completely just technology, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was fun. So yeah, I designed some little stickers. Uh, and originally what I wanted to do was, oh, what's going on with the slide? Oh, there we go. Uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to take a picture of the beans, like actually, um, and this was kind of the setup I had over here on the left was kind of what I was working with. But once I got into editing, it looks a little better. Um, so this was like the kind of image I ended up with. And while I found that I had like a lot of good images and that like these beans did look like beans, I was wondering if I was going to be able to like draw them into cats the way I wanted to uh, without it looking kind of muddy. And so I decided to just go with drawing the beans myself, like using the bean form as like a base for like a drawing of a cat and then turning it into a cat drawing. So that's kind of what's happening here is like, you see, like I have like the kind of beans going on uh, down into, we're kind of drawing the parts on the cat and then that comes up into cat. These are all from different stages of different versions of the sticker, but, um, so yeah, we end up with some stickers and you could get these printed like commercially. I'm not going to because I'm not gonna go out there right now um, <laughs> and get these printed, but you know, um, yeah, so. Super yeah. cute. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's adorable. And I love how you use the, um, the different sorts of patterns on the, the bean, on the beans to like make the, um, the cat markings, like the little mm -hmm. blue splotch and the, the reddish little spots and stuff. That's so cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like inspire your color palette too. It looks like your color palette was inspired by your different, different types of beans. I love yeah, the, well, the, the bean cat in the bottom left-hand corner. I actually, what I do is I Google a color palette generator and like one that lets you like click through and then I just save one that I like. And this was one that I saved and I was like, this is perfect for this project. Mm, super oh cute. Yeah. Mm. What software do you use to make this? Is that uh, I use Photoshop, but you could do it in like anything. <laughs> you could do it in GIMP or any of the free options as well. How did you... um? What did you draw? Did you draw the beans in Photoshop as well? Uh, like with a tablet? Yeah, well, like my beginning sketches were like I, the actual like drawing, like a sketch of a bean okay. that I like turned into a cat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did originally take photos with the intent of like drawing cats onto them. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't, I just didn't think it would look good in the end. So I decided to go with this. Mm -hmm. Wow. What kind of bean is the bottom left guy based bottom on? Bottom left is Pinto bean. Pinto. He's super cute. And they're all super cute. But. Yeah, I did like different styles for each of them too, just to kind of see what would happen. Mm -hmm. Red bean is really weird. Red bean's kind of funky, but <laughs> <laughs> I like that about him. I like the weird. black eyed bean. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, they're all their little poses yeah. and their moods are so are so different and cute and like I don't know, did you how did you decide on the different sorts of um emotional aesthetics that you chose for each little kitty bean? Uh I kind of chose based on I drew the bean first and then I just kind of figured out where a cat would go on it and I went from there. And I like cats are my favorite animal, so I'm like looking at them all the time. So it's like it's not hard for me to imagine what a cat looks like. Yeah. So I think it was easy for me to kind of like see them in their different moods, especially having like living with three. So. Yeah. Oh, this is very, very cool. 
Yeah, it's like you can totally tell that you have you have looked at cats and like studied their attitudes because this is just so I don't know so naturally done. <laughs> like, Thank you. It is. It's beautiful. I love it. And I do hope that you make stickers one day because I'll put them all over my laptop. <laughs> Thank you. I do want to. <laughs> nice. Okay. Next one's a full screen. Sweet. And I'm gonna click around here and oh, sweet. All right, cool. You already there. We go. <laughs> nice. All right, cool. Thanks for all that for the teamwork, guys, for helping me to share the screen or you know to to make that possible because that was adorable. <laughs> um, cute. Okay. Mary Ann. Hello. <laughs> oh, hi. Well, well, um, so of course I Googled what to do with beans and, um, scrolled through and I ended up actually picking, um, pickling <laughs> green beans. Cause I can't, yeah. Yeah, so I found a recipe um, for um, spicy Cajun style green beans and carrots. And I've, I've always kind of wanted to try pickling and I'd never done it. So um, I decided to give it a go. And yeah, I ended up doing two different batches because one I wanted to try with the actual processing where you boil it and seal it tightly so that it can stay on your shelf. And the other, I ended up not doing the, the processing part because I wanted to see, I kind of wanted to compare how they taste the ones that you just put in your fridge and eat immediately. And I wanted to try them. So, um, and the other reason I did them both ways was because when I first did it, I loved the look of the green and the orange and it was very bright, but then of course, over time, it, the ones on the shelf sort of darkened. So I thought, well, maybe if you put them in the fridge, they would retain that. But I'm starting to see that mm, they're both pretty much the same. So I can show you like this is, this is refrigerated and this has been on the shelf. So mm -hmm. kind of, and I haven't tried them yet. I'm Ooh. going to very soon. Apparently they're very good in Bloody Marys. So my mouth back. is watering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had never pickled before. So I'm doing all these things, of course, now mm -hmm. that I've wanted to do. And this was one of them. So have you had pickled green beans before? I'm not sure I have. Uh, I don't think so. I was trying to think, you know, I've had Bloody Marys, but I don't know that I've ever had green beans in them. So, um, yeah, yeah. And I just, I really love the look of the combination of the um, green beans and the orange carrots. Yeah. And then, so, and you put, of course, seasoning and stuff in them and, and basil leaves and, and garlic. And I just thought they're just really pretty on the shelf, yeah. too, you know, so I really enjoy doing them. Yeah. Yeah, they're like a decoration as well. Yeah. Like a festive. Yeah. And, and so simple. Like the brine is what like water, white vinegar, um, sugar, and salt. And really, you can you can almost do it without having to go to the store. So yeah. How I did long have, from oh sorry, go on. I did have to call in a couple of friends for a couple of the seasonings because I didn't want to just go out and buy like celery seed because I wasn't sure I'd be using it that often. So I got, they're so good. Like they just dropped off little baggies of them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was going to ask how long from start to finish it took to make them. Not long, like maybe a half hour, you know? Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, you just get your green beans and your carrots ready and pull out your seasonings and boil your water, throw the stuff in. Yeah, maybe a half hour tops. Cool. Well, you know what? The processing ones were longer because you, you put them in for 10 minutes and, you know, you got to boil a big pot of water. And so that that was kind of interesting because I didn't have like 
the real things to hold the jar to put it into the boiling water. So I had to kind of make my own little contraption. <laughs> what did you use as a contraption? I used like just my, um, you know, um, Oh, like tongs. Tongs, thank you. But these are really heavy. So yeah. I'm not sure I have, um, I have the oven mitts that are like gloves. Oh yeah. If you're familiar with them. So, and for very high heat. So it wasn't too bad putting it over the boiling water. And then I just sort of, I got a stool. So I was up high because I'm really short and just made sure that I sort of just dropped it in very gently. And eventually, yeah. It worked. Yeah, you definitely have to be careful. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you need a big enough boiling pot of water that they're submerged. So um, that was, Steph, that was, took me a little more time, I must yeah. say. The ones just for in the fridge, so simple. So, and oh. I'm anxious to try them because they sound pretty spicy. So, Ooh. yeah, I wanted to try that, but I've always been a bit nervous about it because the big pot of boiling water but you'll try the fridge kind yeah yeah boiling water and spiciness that's I never knew that would be a workplace hazard but apparently no it is <laughs> um wow cool so do you know when you'll be able to try them like are the fridge ones ready um yeah, the, the refrigerated ones um they said you could eat within 24 hours uh, I just haven't gotten to them. So maybe after this program, I will. I should have tried them. Um, that, and so the, the ones that you actually process that are tightly sealed, you can, they say you can keep up to, on your shelf for up to a year. And, but I'm not sure how long it's going to take for them to fully absorb this, the, you know, the mixture of spices and things. I'm guessing the longer you leave them, probably the more the delicious they're going to be. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they're they're very um, popular in New Orleans. This mm -hmm. is, uh, but I I looked at a couple different recipes online, and it referenced certain New Orleans and um, all of that. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I am, um, and I I didn't know this. Like I didn't really think of pickling green beans. I've done you know pickles before, tomatoes and celery, just because I had an overabundance of celery once. <clears throat> but I actually uh, by happenstance I purchased three little Tetra sealed packets of pickled green beans at a random gas station the other day, <laughs> and yeah. I had never seen such a thing. They were really good and also very very spicy. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure how they kept them so crispy, but you'll have to, yeah, let me know how they turned out because I always run into an issue unless I add alum powder that, um, my, my items, my food tends to get a little bit soggy. Um, so I'm wondering like what, what the texture is going to be of it. And, um, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that like the carrots will keep some sort of crunchiness. Mm -hmm. And so I think the spiciness, so there's, um, cayenne pepper is in there. There's um, garlic, peppercorns, mustard seed, cayenne, thyme. So I, I think that's where the, um, the spice really must come through is from that cayenne pepper. I was surprised at how much went in. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I love that it was like aesthetically driven too. That it was the, uh, the, you know, the orange and the green and the pretty sparkly glass uh, as well. Yeah, it does look really beautiful. So yeah. That's yeah, I was really, I was really pleased with them. So it's nice. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for that. And now I'm very hungry. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Stephanie, hi, what have you gotten for us this week? Well, I made also a food item, um, but I veered towards dessert. Um, so I made a vegan um, marshmallow fluff. Um, using the uh, aquafaba, which is the, the liquid from a can of chickpeas. Um, so it can be used as an egg replacement. Um, and if you just beat it up, um, I didn't have any cream of tartar. So um, the fluff is maybe deflating a little bit, um, but you beat it in your, my KitchenAid. I 
and it turns into this fluff. You add whoop, uh, <laughs> the bowl there. Um, add sugar so that it's sweet. Um, and it's marshmallow fluff. I had the idea to um, make it into little cookies um, because I have graham crackers and chocolate. Thought that I would put the marshmallow fluff in between the graham crackers and then dip it in like a melted chocolate mixture. Um, but the fluff is just too liquidy. Mm -hmm. So um, that's like my my end product there. <laughs> it's so a mess. Oh, it looks good though. Um, it does. Right? It's very tasty. Yeah. Um, so that I I kind of had the idea then, well, my husband gave me the idea of maybe making it into a cookie bar um, where you've got the graham crackers and then the fluff and then the chocolate and you just dip it yourself and then eat it in one go. Ooh. Probably but the sink because it's very messy. Um, but it was tasty. So hmm. that's the thing. How does it compare to like regular? Um, um, Laugh, is that what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like I've never made I've never made marshmallow fluff before. I've only had it out of a jar. Um, and the texture for this is very different. Um, this is more like airy um, rather than fluffy. Um, and the taste is quite different. It's, it really didn't taste too much like marshmallow, but it does taste like sweet foam. So I'm fine mm -hmm. with that. Um, it does, I added a lot of sugar and vanilla um, to overpower the bean taste. Um, because I know that the unsalted chickpeas have less of a bean taste, but I only had salted. So, um, and I did make, two years ago, I made vegan marshmallows, but that requires um, agar agar, which I don't have. Um, and I did find that those um, were very beany tasting. Um, so this time I think I maybe overcompensated with sugar and vanilla, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, no problem with that. Um, no, that's really cool. Like what, what else can you, I mean, I guess whatever else you can use whipped cream and sort of uh, meringue for, but have you used, used liquid for any other sorts of recipes? Because that seems so, I don't know, it seems kind of like a godsend for someone who might not use like egg whites um, or cream for that matter. I haven't used it in anything else. I did make also um, like a mousse, um, but that's it kind of doesn't look good either, but it does taste good. It's just chocolate mixed with the stuff and then refrigerated. So it solidifies a little bit. Uh -huh. um, and then it's just fluffy chocolate. Um, but I, I don't know what else you could use it in if it could be used in like other savory or uh, sweet dishes. Um, the only thing I've used it in is this and um, vegan marshmallows. Yeah. Um, Which of course I ruined with the chocolate's not vegan, but whatever. <laughs> Very cool. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about aquafab. I think I've tried it, tried doing something with it once, and I ended up using egg whites instead because I, you know, I had like the beans there, but I was like, oh, what? I wonder what I can do with liquid. Um, but do you know if you can like, cook with it, or it doesn't seem like it would have a lot of proteins in it to to denature and to um congeal if you would bake it but i don't know um if you i don't know the um the website that i got this off of um said that the the recipe is adapted from their vegan meringue cookies recipe um which seems to be basically this exact same recipe but then baked huh. um so maybe i'll give that a shot um, but yeah, it sounds like you can make meringue cookies out of it. Um, I'm not, I'm a bit skeptical, honestly, uh, because this has been sitting unwhipped now for maybe only half an hour and it, the, it really did start to separate already. Okay, cool. But if I had the cream of tartar, maybe it would have stayed together better. Mm -hmm. no. Wow, that's super good to know though. Like I, yeah, that's a really interesting use for bean water who would have thought <laughs> right <laughs> cool well i'm glad it's delicious and does it at least like keep pretty well in the fridge um 
I think that if you wanted to keep it for a day or so, you'd have to re-whip it a little bit um, if you wanted to use it again, like mm -hmm. in a day. I think it should stay in the fridge pretty well. Nice. So re-whip it. Awesome. Okay, well, my mind has been blown. I have cans of garbanzo beans I was going to use for soup, and I, for some reason, feel really bad dumping up the water, and I don't have to. So, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I'm ranting. Is this just with garbanzo beans, then, that you can do this? I I think so. I think you can. I think you can do it with other white beans, okay. uh, but in general, I've heard it um, for just the chickpeas. Um, I think another website I was trying to use said that you could use white beans, but I've never tried that. Okay, interesting. Ooh, yeah, send me the website if you could. That would be really fun. Yeah. To experiment. <laughs> cool. Thank you for that. I. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungrier, so great. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I, I like I said earlier, early before our meeting was I, I did something uh, organic ish myself. Um, a couple of months ago, I did a program with Christopher where we made our own natural pigments and dyes, and I, I made oil paint out of um, rocks that I ground up and mixed with linseed oil. Like, what can I, you know? I really wanted to create a piece of art with, with beans. And I saw the mosaic and I was like, I don't have the patience that Aurora has. So I didn't do that, but I thought what else came in bean form? And I thought about, you know, maybe crushing up the beans and making them into a paste. But I was like, gross, that would be like a bean dip. So I used coffee beans to, um, that I crushed up and then I, I mean, it's, it, it sounds much more fancy than it really is. Guys, I basically just made coffee. It was <laughs> great. And I drank most of it. <laughs> and then I used the rest as um, watercolor paint. And so I came up with a couple of these little paintings. And the lighting isn't great in here, but the images that I am going to photograph and, um, and it'll be edited in will hopefully show the detail a bit better, but I painted a few horses with the coffee, um, just using watercolor techniques. And it was very satisfying, not least of which because they smell wonderful. Um, mm. But it was really, really cool to just, I, I was skeptical about how the molecular structure of coffee would, uh, would differ from watercolors to what I'm used to, but it was actually much more, um, much more workable because watercolor scares me because of how permanent it is on the page. And mm -hmm. with this, if I add enough water, even to the dried image, I can start reworking the, um, the paint from the coffee beans. Um, and yeah, so I, I ride horses. I didn't get to this week and I have been sorely missing doing that. So I, I was inspired by, you know, my, one of my favorite hobbies. Um, and combined that with another one of them, which is painting and came up with some horses. <laughs> but I did a few quick sketches beforehand and just to test it out. I've never painted with coffee before. So it was really fun and it's great. <laughs> so would, the, with, with the first, like first, you know, brush on, was it fairly dark or did you have to do several layers? Like, yeah. did the color really take? It, you know, it took surprisingly well, and I'm going to go ahead and just zoom through this light portion right here mm -hmm. uh, is just one little one pass over with a brush. So I could clearly see the shape that I was creating. Um, I just had to be kind of patient with, with the paint and layer it as it dried without working it too much physically. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, yeah, the first Passover um, with, with the brush definitely laid on some pigment and it stayed. Um, so that was, yeah, it was, it was a pretty easy process once I got going on it. Just wasn't mm. sure it was going to work. <laughs> so I assume you use watercolor papers, right? The, what you paint on it? Yeah, I did. And I have, I mean, it's um, a little visual journal, a visual sketchbook that I like using on a daily basis just to do like little daily sketches. And I, I was surprised that um, I was very happy. It's uh, by Strathmore, a visual journal. 
um, it's only, I think 90 pounds. Yeah. It's 90 pound paper. Like it's not even that heavy weight of a, um, of a medium, but it didn't wrinkle I mean, hardly at all, even with the amount of coffee water I used. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a heavier paper that I was able to use. Would you consider to, um, down the road, try different type of coffee to paint different, um, colors to see if they actually different shade of browns or yeah yeah I think you know the the concentration might be the key I think I just made a regular cup of coffee and thankfully that worked just fine um mm -hmm. <clears throat> for the colors that I that I was going for especially with the layering but I think it would be interesting to I'm, I'm having like these thoughts now of like maybe mixing in a, uh, a fluid medium of some sort, like either honey or something of that nature. Um, and now that I'm like into making natural pigments and things and cook it down a bit to make it into more of an oil or a tempera type um, consistency. So that may be my experiment of the weekend is playing with the concentrations and the different densities of other um, materials introduced. So yeah, definitely something exciting here on the horizon to play with. Mm -hmm. And I have lots of coffee beans. <laughs> your, house, your whole house probably smell very coffee. I'm so happy. Yeah. I can't even, I'm so happy. I love coffee so much and I just want to like keep smelling it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, of course, coffee is very acidic. So I don't know what kinds of issues the paper is going to run into. And I might, I, I, I'm going to try and use a fixative on it. Um, to see if that'll stop the degradation and the, um, the, the sensitivity of the pigment to the light. But mm -hmm. that's, you know, it, it's a to be continued art project, apparently. Um, lots of unknowns. But yeah. Um, and whoop, there it is. The beans, you guys. This was yeah. fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. We did not have an overlap. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you for being here and for keeping me so inspired and creative and challenging me to try new things. Um, I've never painted with coffee before, but I'm like, I got it's, it's getting creative with, I got to bring my A game. <laughs> so thank you for being here. And I hope to see some of you guys again soon. I think next week's theme is WORN, W-O-R-N. Hmm. And I don't know what I'm going to be doing for that, but I'll figure it out. Um, keep playing in the meantime, and I'll see y'all later. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.